I, I just thought it was so important for us to, to just recognize what's going on right now with the COVID uh, pandemic. We're, we're really in such an unprecedented crisis uh, that uh, I think when our, when our leaders around us don't do the right thing, it really uh, means that it's time to take things right to the grassroots and really get ourselves, our own community involved in doing everything that we can. So I wanted to just share a couple of very quick thoughts um, and then offer a few suggestions for maybe almost a challenge for, for five fairly simple things that I think that we can all uh, maybe try to challenge ourselves uh, to, to do. Um, you know, the, the crisis is, is really unprecedented. I'm sure everyone's reading the news and seeing it, but I just wanted to emphasize just how, how real it is. I mean, we're already seeing more cases um, than we've ever seen, of course, of COVID um, in Ontario than we've ever seen. And the estimates from the science table uh, are that those numbers are at risk of tripling or quadrupling by the end of June. Um, and we're already beyond capacity um, if things really don't, don't turn around. So again, I think we in the HIV field have a, have a huge responsibility and we have, we have a responsibility and, and really and a special ability to, to do something about because um, you know, we've been here before. We understand how there are huge similarities between these epidemics and like so many other health conditions, they, they just expose inequities in our, in our society. For, for many of us, I think at, at Legacy, that we know that really well with respect to um, discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation, but for, for HIV also in general, uh, the impacts related to racism, related to poverty and other structural forces What's really clear walking in the wards of the hospital just like a couple of hours ago uh, is that the same thing is happening on an even huger scale with COVID. This is a tremendously uh, racialized epidemic that we're seeing in Ontario right now. It is the, uh, the literal embodied embodiment of inequities in our society uh, that is leading to uh, 40 people in Ontario dying yesterday and 40 families more grieving. So, with that kind of very, I admit, gloomy outlook, I wanted to be positive and, and suggest, again, five, five fairly simple things that I think we can all do to make, make a difference. The first one is to get vaccinated. Um, it may be obvious, um, but it's so important. We have, we're so privileged to have these amazing vaccines that were built on the backbone of investments in HIV vaccine infrastructure and science, which is really important for us to remember. Um, it's a huge triumph that we have them. They are effective. They are safe, yes, uh, there are these glitches and the, the AstraZeneca clot thing is, is a real but extremely rare um, issue uh, where the benefit clearly still outweighs the risk, especially in Ontario in, in April of 2021. So number one is, is to go get vaccinated if you haven't already, if you're eligible. Number two is to help somebody else get vaccinated. And I think that's almost more important. Help somebody else, especially if they are a little hesitant or unsure, um, if they don't have the wherewithal to do it themselves. I'm sure this whole crowd is super internet savvy, knows how to navigate websites and, and phone calls and, and make things happen. Uh, do that for one person, not just in your family, not just a friend, but someone maybe a little distant from you who you could really make a difference in, in their life. Uh, in their community and our collective community. Um, drive them to their appointment as well if you can with, uh, with masks on and the, and the windows down. Number three is, again, maybe another big challenge. Speak up and speak out. Um, write to, to your government officials, your elected officials, uh, because unfortunately they continue to, to fail us and not follow this, the science, the evidence. Sign a petition um, and, and support policies that we know are going to make a difference, like paid sick leave. Uh, we have, I think in the city of Toronto right now, there's 62 active ongoing outbreaks in workplaces. Um, that is where we're seeing these infections happen. Uh, that's where people who have to choose between, you know, uh, going to work and putting themselves at risk of, of a life-threatening infection or staying home and, and losing a paycheck, that's where those decisions are getting made and having impacts on people's lives. A fourth one, um, it relates to something that uh, uh, Marvelous and Roxanne said, um, it's to avoid the kind of shaming and stigmatizing language that we sometimes see when people talk about COVID. Uh, we know very well in the HIV field that shaming and stigmatizing are not good public health policies. They, they kind of don't work. Um, they do the opposite of what we want. And, and sometimes even within our own community, we see that's happening with, re with respect to COVID and, and people's uh, behaviors. So um, speak up when, when, we, when you hear it and uh, um, come back to stigma and shaming everywhere you see it. And then the very last one is another kind of big picture thing, but there's a lot of talk sometimes about um, what we call vaccine nationalism. There's a lot of comparisons and saying, oh, our Canadians, uh, you know, Canada is doing terribly with respect to vaccines. It's a shame and we should be more like country X. 
Um, and it's fair to criticize policy and we don't have enough vaccines, that's true. Um, but I think it's important not to, uh, not to put things in perspective. We're actually doing fairly well with respect to vaccine role on a global level. It's not where we want it to be, but that's because there aren't enough vaccines in the whole world. And uh, none of us are, are safe anywhere on the planet until the entire world is, is safe uh, and the vaccine variants or sorry, the virus variants are really showing us that. So trying to avoid that kind of language about, you know, uh, Canada is not good enough and this other country is better. We should be more like them. It's not a competition between countries. Uh, we're all truly in this together. And I hope that these uh, little suggestions on things that we can do might be, uh, might be useful. So uh, that's all I wanted to, to share. Thank you so much again to Canfar for uh, this event. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. I can't wait to have my cocktails. And uh, thanks to everyone else for uh, all the sacrifices that they're making every day. Thank you.